How's everyone doing this morning, huh? Is everybody okay? All right. Come on up. We're not going to start without you. Come on. Find, can you find a seat there? Whoa, Mr. Scott's back with us today. Good morning. It's too bright in Skunky's eyes. Oh, what's, what's that? Bobcat. Bobcat, very good. I'm glad everybody got to see it. Well, I'll turn my light off. I was in an area that was really dark and it was very frightening. Remember today, or this last week, we talked about me going on the cliffs? And what did I say I, what I'd have to do when I did that? You guys remember? I would have to have a trail partner or what we also call a mentor with me because this is a very, very important part of the journey. So I brought my trail partner. This is kind of a symbol. This isn't, of course, a real person that can't talk or anything, but it symbolizes the mentor or the partner I would need when I go on the cliffs because you need someone that give you words of encouragement. You need someone that can help you out if you get frightened. So we're going to put him right there. And I got out on the cliffs. It was bad enough off the trail. I got all those weeds and stuff all over me. So I got on the cliffs, very frightening. Unfortunately, I don't think I took enough rope, so coming down the cliffs at first was easy, but then I ran out of rope, so I had to jump. And that took a lot of faith. What's faith? Faith is when you trust that everything will be okay if you take a chance, right? So. I got down on the cliffs, off the cliffs, very dark at the bottom, very dark, and that's why I needed my headlamp, and I started going out into the swamp. Guess what I found out there? Oh, no. <laughs> why does everyone put their hands up by their mouth when I do this? <sighs> Now remember, every time I've taken the next leap, the next chance, I've found neater and neater things, haven't I? So, I was out in the swamp. Make sure I get it by the right end. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now, so that we don't knock the mentor off, let's put him in here. We don't want to have to hurt him. He came in very useful. What is this? Crocodile. No. Nope. Alligator. alligator. Very good. I thought it was a lizard too when I first saw it. But yes, it is a baby. And you know that they stay around their mom for like two years after they're born? Really? Oh, yeah. So I hurried up and got out of there. <laughs> I hurried up and got out of there. So you see what happens when you take extra risks when you're on the trail? You find it's very alive. <laughs> yes. And just like we did last week, I'll get to share him a little more with you in Children's Church. How does that sound? Okay. You like that? Right. Okay. Well, we're going we're gonna to put him back in now, okay? Maybe not. My trail partner didn't like that, did he? Okay. Well, I hope to see you guys all on the trail. And I will see you guys soon, okay? Okay, bye. Just a little later. Just a little later. Oh, Mr. Scott, thank you so much for coming and sharing with us. Wow, an alligator, huh? Yeah. Boy, when you get off of the trail and on the cliffs, and as we grow in our faith, we just get to see more and more and experience more and more of God's beauty and of God's creation and of all God has in store for us. Let's bow our heads real quick for a word of prayer, okay? Gracious, loving God, oh, your creation is so wonderful. And the relationship, God, you offer with us just goes deeper and deeper and deeper and opens our lives, Lord, to more and more wonders of your love and of your grace. May it constantly grow in our hearts and especially in the hearts of these children. And we thank you, God, for each of them and their homes and families. Bless them. For we ask this in your holy name. Amen. Hey, I invite you to go back and sit with your parents or where you were seated. And then a little later on, if I remember, we will uh, dismiss you to Children's Church this morning, okay? Let's continue.
The scripture today is Luke 15:32. It's on page 79 of the New Testament in your pew Bible if you'd like to read along. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The word of God for the people of God. How many of you remember that old game show, Name That Tune? Yes, most of us probably watched that. We're not going to play that this morning. But I do want to mention that show because I want to do something similar, but it's not exactly like that. I was always fascinated by how quickly people, most people, could pick up a tune and four or five notes that they were familiar with. But we're going to do something a little different. We're going to do Name That Lyric this morning, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the word, which is a lyric in a song, and it may not be at the beginning of the song, and see how many words I need to give you before you can name the song that these lyrics belong to, okay? First word, I. You didn't get it? How many many songs have I in it? Okay, can't get that. All right, I. Second word, I. I wondered. Well, there's a lot of mummering out there. <laughs> what? I wondered as I wondered. Nope. I, not I wondered as I wondered, but that's good. That's good. I wondered. Another guess? I wondered. Do what? <laughs> twinkle, twinkle, little star. I didn't think about that. No, that's not it either. All right. I wondered so. I wondered so. Do what? No, not love lifted me. You guys are really good at this, though. All right. One more. I wondered so aimless. I wondered so aimless. I saw the light. Hank Williams, I saw the light. I wondered so aimless, life filled with sin. All right, that was great. One more, one more, okay? Just one more this morning. First word, I. (laughs) All right, let's try the second word. Okay. I once, I once. Oh, my land, it's two words. You got it. Amazing grace. I once was lost, and now I'm fine. found, was blind, but now I see. Those two songs, and probably hundreds like them, follow a theme that we experience reoccurring over and over again in the lives of individuals who are on their spiritual journey, and that is a sense of which, from time to time, we find ourselves lost. We don't know where we are. It happens sometimes because of the dynamic of our lives where those things that used to be familiar, those things that used to be the markers of our lives, those things which were the staples of our lives, suddenly don't make sense anymore. We've lost connection with them. We've lost touch with them. And so we don't seem to be able to connect with some of the more primary and fundamental aspects of our lives. We have lost a sense of meaning. We no longer really understand where our lives are headed or where they're going. We don't seem to be able to pull a purpose for our lives anymore. We may be confused about what's real and what's not, what's true and what's not, about our world and about our lives. It's really a common experience. Many of us find ourselves in that place from time to time. It's common, it's not pleasant. Matter of fact, it's really unpleasant for the most part. If you really find yourself in that experience, we don't like staying there. We don't like staying in the confusion. We don't like staying in the chaos. We don't like staying in the uncertainty. 
Oftentimes it's an apprehensive time. It's a very uncertain time. It's so common, though, that in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus has a whole chapter of lost stories or parables that Jesus shares. He talks first about the lost sheep, and then he talks about the lost coin, and then he goes on to share one of the most famous stories in the world, as well as in the scriptures, and that's the story of the lost son, which we call the prodigal son, the story of the prodigal son. And the scripture verse this morning was at the very end of that story. These lost stories have certain things in common, but they also share certain uniquenesses about the experience of being lost, of not knowing where we are in the midst of life are no longer in contact with some of the fundamental dynamics and dimensions that make life meaningful and purposeful. But in each of the stories, one of the great dimensions that they hold in common is this sense of when we get found, it's party time. And every story, whether it's the sheep or whether it's the coin or whether it's the sun, it's always the same. It's time to throw a party because that which was lost is now found. Today is the last Sunday in this series of sermons on the trail. We end up on the cliffs today and and this is the end of this series. We're going to come back to... Some of this information a little later on in a few weeks, but for right now, we're going to close this today and we're going to move away from it. And as we do, one of the comments that I have heard most over the last several weeks, as we've shared the brochure, as we've watched the video, as we've moved through the trail together, is, Larry, I don't know where I am on the trail. I've read your brochure, I've watched the video, I've listened to the sermons, and I don't know where I am. I don't know what spot I'm in. And the other question I've heard most often is, I feel like I'm in more than one spot at the same time. Can I be in multiple locations at once? Yeah, you can. And you probably are. And that's what I want to talk about just for the next few minutes and help you understand why and how that happens in our lives When I first came here, I started speaking and sharing and teaching around Wesley's three simple rules. You remember those rules? They are do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God. Do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God. We moved through the first two fairly quickly, but when we got to stay in love with God, we moved into a discussion of Wesley's means of grace. And by means of grace, all I'm saying is these are the practices of, that many people use in their lives to nurture themselves spiritually. They fall into two broad categories, acts of piety and acts of mercy. The acts of piety are the things that we do that kind of internally nurture us. It's like prayer and devotions and Bible reading. The acts of mercy are things which we do outward, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, caring for the needs of others. Our congregation and our church and many of the individuals of this congregation are involved in both of those things. And because of that and because of the various practices that we are involved in, we may find ourselves at very different places, at different aspects of our own spiritual walk and life, in our spiritual journey. Let me illustrate. Now I chose an illustration that I don't think fits anyone in this congregation, so you don't need to look around and try to figure out who I'm talking about, okay? But I've known individuals who were absolutely over the top gung-ho about mission trips. And any time there was a mission trip, anywhere in the world that they could participate in, they did that. 
They went on local mission trips. They went on mission trips all over the United States. They went on mission trips all over the world. And they were sometimes in high-risk situations on mission trips. So, I mean, but they were just, this was what they did. Now, when it came to acts of mercy and service to others, they were over the top out there in terms of their spiritual journey. But some of these individuals I know attended church only sporadically. As far as I know, they really didn't have much of a prayer life. I don't think they had any kind of daily devotional life. They were involved in mission trips because when they went on a mission trip, they got this enormous elation high, this spiritual high. They were really connected with God. They found God on a mission trip, and that's where they went to have this experience. And as soon as they got off of one, they would crash because they had no other real practices in their lives. And so their spiritual journey was this whoop, boom, whoop, boom. And that's where they were. Now, they were at different places. When it came to service and mission, they were at the top. They were way out there. But in most other aspects of a spiritual life, they were at the trailhead or just barely on the path. Now, you can take that and say, well, then where are they as a whole? Well, you can figure that out. Where are they as a whole? They're not very far on their spiritual journey. They live a very unbalanced and a very undisciplined spiritual life jumping from one high to the next and crashing in between. As you look at the journey, you know, they may be off the trailhead, but they're just barely on the path because there's so much that they could do in their spiritual life and walk that would take those experiences that they're having and incorporate them to deeper and deeper levels in their faith. God could show them so much more if they were willing to do a few more steps in their life. Now, that's kind of a radical explanation, but, it, but it, I hope it illustrates the point of how, yes, it is very possible to find yourself at different places in your spiritual walk on this journey. But to realize also all of those can kind of be brought together, averaged, to find the one place that you kind of are on that journey as well. Now, as I say this, this is important. Listen. Never let anyone tell you where you are on your journey. Never let anyone define you. This is not about people picking where you are and telling you where you are. That is completely not what this is about. And the only exception to that might be if for a time you were working with a spiritual mentor or a spiritual guide and you were inviting that person to counsel and to work with you to help you in your spiritual journey, then that person might be a person who, as they got to know you better, could give you that kind of advice and counsel. I know of no one in this congregation that's doing that. There may be, and there would be those who would benefit from that kind of experience. But that would be the only exception I can think of to this process or to this plan. So where am I? I feel lost. I don't know how to find myself. Well, the Discerning Our Direction team has pulled together a little resource that we want to give you this morning. I'm going to invite the ushers at this time to get up if they would. They're going to be handing out a document this morning to all of you, and it's called a spiritual self-assessment. It uses Wesley's means of grace, his acts of piety, and his acts of mercy. And it asks several questions on each of them that you can run down there and find yourself in the midst of this and say, yes, this is a practice of my life. No, I, this is not a practice of my life. And it help, will help you to find yourself on your own spiritual journey and your own walk. And why is that important? 
because it's a lot better to be found than lost. Because once we're found, then we can look at this and we can say, wow, if I were to step it up in this area of my walk a little bit, I could deepen my relationship with God. I could find more fulfillment in my spiritual journey and in my spiritual walk. And so, again, this is your tool to use for your benefit to help you find yourself on this spiritual journey and on the spiritual walk that you're walking. You will find that you're at different places in different disciplines, and you will find that you are kind of overall in one place, in one spot. And you will find a whole list of suggestions in that as to what you might do to take that next step. Do you remember how Scott closes the video? Scott closes the video by talking about this great adventure of being a Christian disciple and asking the question, what's your next step? What's your next step? That's the question I leave you with this morning. When you find yourself, ask yourself, what's my next step? What's my next step on this journey to grow in experiencing this magnificent, amazing, wonderful adventure of being a disciple of Jesus Christ and helping by my little bit to transform the world in which I live to make it a better place for me, for my family, for my children, for my grandchildren, for my friends and for my neighbors, for my community, and for all who share life with me. Would you bow your heads with me for a word of prayer? Gracious, loving God, thank you for inviting us on this journey. Thank you for walking with us every step of the way. Thank you for helping us to find ourselves in the midst of our relationship with you and hearing the invitation, the challenge to go deeper with you, to take that next step to find a new and richer, more meaningful, more powerful, more intimate relationship with you. Thank you, God, for all that you give us and all you provide. In your name we pray. Amen.